Uh, our next panel is now an interview. Uh, Anand had a last minute emergency. I had to cancel this morning, so my apologies, and he sends his apologies. But uh, I think we're gonna have an awesome discussion. Uh, for those of you who don't know Sarah, Sarah is uh, a super connector, and uh, she's awesome. And uh, Ethan is the um, co-founder of Muesli. So they're gonna have a discussion about product. And so um, we've talked about fundraising, we've talked about recruiting, and now we're talking about you have to build some shit and people have to like it. So uh, with that, I want to welcome Sarah and Ethan. Let's give them a round of applause. Talking about building winning products and kind of go through a little bit of a how-to, just from start to finish, building teams to even launching product. And um, we've got Ethan Gway here with me. and. Um, we're going to just go through this with you guys in a fireside chat. Um, if you're responsible for developing your product or your product strategy, you need a blueprint to follow. That doesn't have to be a rigid formula um, for the product itself. Uh, that would probably just yield something boring or an, an inspiring product, but you should probably have a defined approach to developing a winning product strategy. Or if you prefer to look at it this way, you should follow a series of steps that will help you to have a clear path forward for inspiration to strike so that when you get that idea, you can go for it. And you're always looking and always hungry. And that's what we're going to discuss today on this um, fireside chat and hopefully leave you guys with some winning product advice to follow. So my name's Sarah Austin. I am the moderator of this panel. And formerly, I was a product marketing advisor to the CMO of Intel and did product marketing for Ford, GM, HPE, SAP, and Microsoft. And I've spent a lot of time doing natural language processing and data science products. Um, I've shipped two personal assistants and a solution for evaluation of union psychology and a process that's called broad listening that helps people to innovate and do listening for their products. And then I also write a weekly column for Entrepreneur Magazine about tips and tricks and advice for entrepreneurs. So if you guys have a pitch you want to send my way, um, on the side I have a startup that I work on part-time called WeWire. I'm the founder CEO. It's a payment solution it's my product job for Africa. And, uh, um, probe, Ethan, questions. he is co-founder and head of engineering at Muesli. And Muesli is a startup that, works for me. that has raised over $25 million. <laughs> and Ethan, um, before that, was co-founder and CEO of UniU, a journaling app for your close friends and families. Um, and then Ethan also has a little bit of advice for you um, just along the process of ideation to launching your product. We're going to jump into that. Um, but yeah, I also noticed that Muesli had a name change, so you know, just kicking things off with a little bit of a background on Muesli and what your product does, if you could jump in. Thanks for having me, Sarah. Um, so um, Muesli was, when, when we first launched, we're actually called Trustver, so uh, it's short for, it's, it's combined, in combination of trusted helpers. Um, when we first started, we're actually a, a, a tips and tricks app for, from experts, so trusted personal, uh, persons that, 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 that the name was alluded to. Um, so we get uh, tips from uh, you know, uh, 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 home improvement experts, uh, local restaurants for like tour tips or uh, travel tips, and uh, also makeup uh, uh, artists that, uh, for, for beauty tips and makeup tips. So um, that's how we started. And uh, today, uh, the name changed to Muesli, which is really, uh, we're playing on the, uh, on the word Muse, which is your inspirations. And today we uh, sell uh, prescription skincare products. So that's, uh, that, that's, that's where the uh, a name change came from. So you started things off with tips, tricks, and advice for people right. that kind of saw that beauty was taking off right. in the skincare and makeup realm, and then you guys honed in on that right, and exactly. changed the name, rebranded. So the, the name might be very different, and the product may be very different. You know, it all happened over the, year, over the last seven years we've been building on Muesli. 
And uh, it, it's, it's to us, it's actually the, the transition or the pivots are actually very smooth. So we started with the you know, tips of everything, and then we're honing on, on beauty tips, which is you know, the category that took off by far uh, uh, back then. And then you know, from building beauty tips, and then we started you know, listening to our customer, customer asking, oh, how can I buy this product you were talking about in your tip? How can I buy that product? Then we build a marketplace for natural products um, for all the, 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 the brands that you can, you can hardly find. Actually, or some of your brands, they don't even have a website, so we, we provide that solution for them. And after that, we keep talking to our customers, listening to them, and then which led to, which is a, a, a stronger version of the product that, it, that they're looking for, which is harder to access, which requires prescription. So that's the, that's the solution that we're providing today. Excellent. Well, it seems like you guys have really done well, just building a strong foundation. And oftentimes, as we all know, that starts off with hiring the right people, but also creating a great team, environment, and culture that fits what the product is and how that's going to take form. So having people with good domain expertise, for example. Um, what advice do you have for the audience to create an all-star, high-performing team? A all-star high-performing team. Well, I think, you know, I think we can all agree to that. There's many, many traits uh, that one must look for to build an all-star team. But to me, uh, and uh, especially for startup, when it, in, in the context of startups, I think the most important trait, number one, is passion. And uh, passion comes really in two ways. Um, the individual that I'm looking for uh, has to be passionate about our mission, about what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, that's, that's very important, because that helps you to stay on course. Because just look at our own example from day one. You know, we have a, we have a mission, um, but the way to actually get there, the strategy constantly changes. And the passion about the mission actually helps you stay on course. And uh, regardless of the talent or experience that you have, if you can't stay on course, you're not going to get there. So that's why passion is important on the first, first half. The second half, um, they also have to be very passionate about what they actually do. So for an engineer is uh, about engineering, or yeah. product, you know, um, a product guy will be building you know, uh, good products and marketing, so forth. Right? They have to be very passionate about the, their own discipline. And the reason for that is very simple, because what you know today is certainly going to help as a good foundation, but what you end up doing uh, is going to change as, your, as, your, as the strategy changes. And you have to be passionate about your own discipline in order to stay up to date about what's the latest uh, product strategy or marketing strategy. Um, so that requires you to stay on course sometimes for quite a while. So if you're not passionate about what, uh, what you're actually practicing, then you may not be able to adapt and you will not perform so well. So passion is certainly the number one uh, uh, ranked uh, trait that I, I look for in my team. Yeah, and then another thing I might want to add on there is mm -hmm. uh, finding a diverse background. So very Even true. if you have, you have two engineers and a designer to start, maybe look for a designer who has a background in liberal arts or some other English background, right. for example. Right. That's a, that's a very good point because um, I, I, could, I could speak to it. Because I, I came from a, a, a computer science background. I'm an engineer myself. Um, we, it, it's very important to include different people from different disciplines uh, in your startup. Actually, Uni, when we started, we, um, that company, uh, we had that company for two years, and it was actually started by four engineers, me with three other people. And um, we pivoted a couple times. We stick around for two years, worked really, really hard, you know, seven days a week, and uh, didn't work so well because um, even though we were able to build a product, or what we call a product, an app, actually probably on the App Store, um, the app failed at uh, communicating to the consumers. It was a consumer, it was a consumer app. Um, and uh, in retrospect, I think, you know, if we had designers that were product, you know, person to help us, actually, that would be much, much better. Because um, even though at the time, still thinking back now, we thought we are able to come up with the UIs that's necessary to actually bring this product to the market. We 100% believe so, and fairly objectively, too. However, the problem is we don't know what we don't know. And so, you know, we launched a product and we end up, uh, the product didn't do so well and we, we thought that the idea wasn't so good. That could be just the way that you communicate, right? How you write your, what, what's, what, what's your brand? It could be the branding. So, um, and uh, because of what we don't, what we don't know, what we don't know, um, even though I think I may be qualified to actually launch this new product or new feature myself, 
I always try to include other people from different disciplines to give you perspectives because that's, 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 that's the most valuable thing because you can at least see them and it can make your you know, final judgment yourself. Yeah, and Vinod Kosla pushes this all the time. Uh, Peter Drucker, management books, like you have to hire generalists to start off and then as you grow 200 people plus, you're gonna be looking for specialists. Um, you know, obviously looking for people who have marketing background. If you Absolutely. only have four engineers, would have been more helpful for Muesli, but hey, you guys are where you are now. <laughs> um, and then, of course, people often start with their friends. What do you do when you have a friend you oh. need to fire? Just kick him to the curb? Or <laughs> <clears throat> well, I think when you have, when you decide or when you realize someone, it's time to fire someone, I think it's the time to do it, regardless if it's a friend or not. And especially for a friend, if actually you care about this friend, you should uh, part ways sooner rather than later when you realize it's not the right fit. Uh, for that reason, I would, I would recommend not to, not to, if you have a choice, uh, uh, don't start a startup with your friend because it, it um, a startup requires a lot of different, uh, a great many things uh, from both of you, which you may not be comfortable with with your past experience. So um, when you realize someone is not performing at the level, um, especially at early stage, mm -hmm. you should um, have an upfront conversation with them and tell them, hey, this is not working out. Uh, and uh, you know, it's for the best of the company and just, you should stop working with them because um, what makes or breaks the company are individuals, especially for startups at the very beginning stage, right? Just one person that's not performing can kill the entire company. Not so true for Microsoft, for example, uh, um, but uh, it is very true for startups. Mm -hmm. um, if one guy, so a, a very easy example, four of the, you know, four, four guys working together, if one guy started, um, you know, all working eight hours, 12 hours every day, one, day, one guy started taking vacations, and I don't know about the, what, what, what would the three other guys feel. It's just simple things like that could derail the entire company. So. Um, we realize it's not right, you don't want to wait. Right. Right. And the next step is customer discovery. So you build the right team, and the top rule is simple. Talk to your customers, right? But we think we know our customers when we're building these applications. But the reality is, is that we don't. And we don't discover what you need to discover unless you go out there and talk to them. And when starting up your company, company, what was that process like for you, listening to your customers? How did you determine this product was right? Um, specifically for Muesli, the dermatology prescription That's cosmetics. Sure, um, so there's two parts to this question, I guess. Uh, the first part is um, where do we, how, how do we go about talking to the customer? I think talking to the customer is very, very important and uh, you know, uh, which led to what we are today, actually, from day one. At the very beginning, we're talking to our customers. That would, that would be constructor, um, co contractors uh, from construction companies or general contractors or local business owners, restaurant owners, uh, and uh, makeup artists. And I talked to all of them to figure out what they want and what platform, what tool they need to express uh, 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 the tips or the expertise that they have. Right, and to today, um, we, we talk to, of course, dermatologists and also our, our, our users, what do they need and uh, what uh, actually value we can, we can add to the dermatologists that we talk to. Um, without going to the specifics, uh, I think it's very important to talk to people in different ways. So you wanna talk to someone who's you know, online and offline, right? So offline will be your friends and family, um, offline will be, for example, uh, 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 even just go into different dermatologist uh, office and actually talk to them. Also online, you can go into forums, Facebook groups will be great. Um, uh, we actually got into uh, uh, this uh, uh, dermatologist group on Facebook, which have like 2,000, 4,000 of them. So it was, a, it was a great, so we posted, you know, proposed our idea and we got a lot of uh, uh, introduction through that. So uh, definitely employ both online and offline um, and uh, strangers and uh, friends and fa friends and family, your strategy when talking to customers. The second question is, how do you know your product is a winning product? Well, the truth is we didn't know. Right? So, so we, when we launched the product, we, we, we think it solves at least one particular problem, but, but do we think it's the best product out there? Not really, but we launched it anyways because 
Um, even though we can talk to people before we launch the product, but we, what we really learn is after launching the product, basically after you put yourself out there, and then um, you all of a sudden get to see, uh, get to hear much, much more than what you hear, and people are having genuine reaction to the product that they're actually using. Uh, I remember there was saying, I think it's from uh, Ray Hoffman, and uh, he said, uh, if you don't feel uh, disappointed or embarrassed uh, about your first product, that means you launched it too late. And that's how soon you should launch a product because yeah. once you launch it, all of a sudden you have all these perspectives flushing in. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the time where you get the. So we didn't know. We launched it anyways, and then we learned. We, we, we uh, iterated after that. Right, and that happens all the time with startups. So VCs often look for the right team in order to make that bet. So, for example, Muesli, it's, it's dermatologist, right. right? But at the same time, it's serving customers, so it's consumer facing, and the consumers are saying, we want clear skin. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Right? It's not like they're saying, I want to talk to a dermatologist, even if they're saying, I need better access to dermatologists, what they're really saying is, I have acne, please clear my skin, right? Right, right, And right. so you might not need a dermatologist to right. get that clear skin, you just need to have access to a prescription. Right. Because often what the dermatologists do is they just prescribe it, right. you try it for a month, right. if it doesn't work, they prescribe something else. Exactly. Right, so you're kind of automating, you're kind of cutting the derm, I mean, I don't want to speak for your product, <laughs> but oftentimes what technology does is it cuts out the middleman, right? Right, right, right. And that, that's, very, that's very true, because our customers are really looking for, you know, what are the best anti-aging products out there. Oh, even if that's um, what they're saying. So right, how do you listen saying, if, right. if your customers are saying one thing, but you yeah. need to listen through what they're saying exactly. and do this deep listening in order to actually build a product that they want? Because it's Absolutely. like, I hear that. It's like a psychologist who says, I hear you're saying this, but what you're really saying is you have issues with your father, right? So it's right. that kind of thing. How do you do that? Right, so, so you know, continuing with this example, I think is a great example, is that our, when we talk to our customer with regular skincare products, which you know, we sell, um, what they're asking for is, hey, you know, there's a lot of them actually mention this particular product that they get from their dermatologist, which is very, very effective, but it's very expensive. You know, talking to a dermatologist is very expensive, so they're asking, how can we talk to our dermatologist for cheaper? And we actually talked to dermatologists, it's actually true. They can't make it cheaper in any way. So we were thinking, you know, how can we make seeing dermatology cheaper? But that's actually the wrong path. Our customer actually don't actually want to see dermatology. They don't actually need to see dermatology. Well, they, they do need in order to get a prescription drug. But what they are a actually asking for is the access to this particular medication, uh, skincare medication that they need, that they found to be effective. Um, so we worked with a compound uh, uh, pharmacy to actually compound this particular medication and also have a pool of uh, nurse pr practitioners and dermatologists who actually have the capacity to actually prescribe or to review these, uh, these uh, uh, patients and uh, at the same time. So at the end, what we're doing is providing access, a cheaper access to the medications that they're already looking for. Um, uh, so that's the, by, by using telemedicine. So that's our current model. But that's, you can see that how that's different than where, that, where they're asking for, which was how can I see my dermatologist for cheaper? Yes. They actually don't want to see. That's no. quite the contrary. Yeah, exactly. So can you just, can you just feel that tension, like this <laughs> problem being solved, right? This is what goes into building winning products, is really solving the problem by listening to what right. people are actually saying when they're not telling you anything related. Um, going beyond uh, following a product blueprint and developing that solid plan, one thing you've strategically established is almost certainly not going to be the exact route that your product development process follows. Right. Things are going to change along the way. They always do. Um, what advice do you have for, for that change and just rapidly in iterating right. your product development process? Well, I think it's having the pers or having the right mindset when you go in before you actually go into this long journey. Well, mm -hmm. realizing it is going to be a long journey. It's going to be a marathon where you have to change course multiple times. Recognize that it's 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 most likely going to happen. Um, that pre prepares yourself for that. So don't think that this is the idea. Even though when you're going, usually you think this is the idea. It's going to be the you know next unicorn I'm building. 
but realize that that's going to, more, more often than not, that's going to change, so realize that. And so focus on finding uh, passionate individuals to work with from different disciplines, I think is very important, because that helps you stay on course. And so the strategy change doesn't really matter, that's the pivot, but your mission is still the same. Or sometimes the mission could even change for certain companies. So having a, a team from different disciplines is very important. And, um, and uh, talk to your customers. That's, that's the most valuable asset. Um, be it your individuals, consumers, or businesses, talk to them. Trying to listen deeply, trying to understand what they're you know, uh, really trying to say, what's the real problem they're facing. And um, last, but, you know, uh, last advice is stick to it. And sometimes it, it, it takes longer, it, it, it may be harder, uh, but um, maybe the next turn is, is, uh, is what you're looking for and how, how you can get there. So. A hundred percent, and that's what venture capitalists are looking for, so be sure to be able to communicate your larger vision um, so that everyone can see the possibilities, what you want to accomplish beyond just your product prototype that you're demoing to raise money. Um, be open for change. That pretty much wraps it up for our winning products talk. I hope you guys had some learning lessons out of this, and we will be around so thanks so much, Nima, and thank you to Ethan. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you.